Reporting in progress. Hey guys, Mr. Riz here to help you out on the next section. Uh, we're going to split this up into two parts, but uh, the first part where we're going to be looking at is making sure we can look at uh, points of discontinuity and then make sure we can identify asymptotes of rational functions. And then hopefully we'll be able to graph those. Now, a lot of times with the graphing, we'll be using uh, like Desmos or a graphing calculator, but hopefully we can identify the key features of that graph. All right, so first off, rational functions, things that we've been dealing with is basically a function that has two parts or two separate functions dividing each other. So uh, P and Q are both polynomials, which was what we did in the last chapter. The only thing is Q just cannot be zero because we can't divide by zero. So as long as we have something divided by something, that's considered a rational function. Now, graphs of rational functions can always look a lot different. You know, sometimes we might just have like these curved to bend lines. Sometimes they might be straight lines with a hole in them. Sometimes they can be two curved lines that have these asymptotes, like these points that, that never gets reached. Like this one has a horizontal asymptote and a vertical asymptote. Now, asymptotes are kind of where the line approaches, never actually gets to those points, but we get really, really close to those. So first off, points of discontinuity are places on a graph with specifically, oops, there we go, it's kind of weird, uh, that specifically have a hole or have a asymptote. Let's see if I can spell that correctly. Asym Oh, wait, oh my gosh. Okay, now if we look here, if we look at our function and our examples, we might notice some things here. This hole here is when x equals negative 2. All right, at negative 2, we have a hole. Over here, we have our hole, you know, keep in mind everything's by 2 here, is when x equals 2. If we look, a clear dead giveaway of any discontinuous point is what would make the denominator equal to zero. Okay, so let's first talk about holes and make sure we can identify those. So a hole is a point, an x, y point, where there's a break in the graph. Okay, so to find a hole here, what we first need to do is to... Uh, go through and find the x coordinate that makes the denominator equal to zero. So if we look here, if we have the denominator equal to zero, that would be x equals negative two. Now we know that it is a whole here when x equals negative two because that is a discontinuous point, but it's a discontinuous point that gets canceled out. So that's how we know that it's a whole. Now to find the y coordinate of that whole, we're going to going to substitute that number into the simplified equation. So remember, a simplified version, those canceled out, and all we're left with is just x plus 3. So if we were to take this negative 2 and plug it in to get our y, remember our y equals, y would equal negative 2 plus 3, so y would equal 1. So that means that there is a hole at negative 2, 1 on our graph. Okay, now a vertical asymptote, a vertical asymptote is when the denominator equals zero, okay, and that denominator does not get canceled out. So we just have x plus four in the top, x minus two, they don't cancel out. So we just have the denominator would be x equals neg, or no, x equals positive two, okay. So that does not get canceled out. We would have a vertical asymptote at x equals positive two. So you guys can see here, the holes get canceled out. The vertical asymptotes are the ones that don't get canceled out. All right. Let's keep doing a little more, some practice, get into some more details as well. So let's have you try to uh, do these problems here. See if you can identify where there's holes and where there are vertical asymptotes. Okay, so if you look at these two problems here, the biggest thing I want you guys to do, holes, a little bit difficult, but I want you guys to be able to go through and see, okay, 
we'd have a discontinuous point here at positive one. That would make this first part equal to zero. And another one at negative three. Okay. Now, if we would look, neither one of those gets canceled out on the top. So both of these are vertical asymptotes. If you double check this on a graphing calculator, you can see they would be points that would go up. All right. Now over here, we would have a discontinuous point at two and another discontinuous point at negative three. But two does get canceled out. So we would say this would be a hole and this would be a vertical asymptote. Now, I just want to show you guys something on a graphing calculator. Uh, let's see if I can pull up Desmos here. Um, and see if we can look at this graph here. You know, I'll clear off my drawing here. Okay, let's graph that just to show you how holes or finding holes are a little, is a little difficult. So if you were to type in, I got to use x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 3. Oh, come on. You definitely see that there's a vertical asymptote here at 3. But we said that there was a hole at 2. And if you look, we don't see a hole on 2 on Desmos. In fact, you have to keep zooming in and zooming in and zooming in and zooming in. And zooming in. On Desmos, it's pretty crazy how far you have to zoom in. Make sure I keep lining up here. There will be a hole. This is the crazy part of Desmos. This is almost like one of those ventures you go on. Just keep zooming in, zooming in, zooming. Oh man. Okay. I got to line up here with two. It won't let me zoom in anymore. Can I make my graph bigger? Oh, Desmos changed this. Okay. There isn't a hole here. You don't see one. The only way you actually see is if you turn this into a table and then you type in two and it says it's undefined. Before they they used them, they probably just updated this program here. Um, it used to be if you had that, um, it would show actually like a gap in it. All right. That's my podcast. Okay, now the other one over here, what is this x plus one? Okay, so we look at the denominator here and we can see that the denominator would equal negative one. That's a discontinuous point, but what kind of discontinuous point? Does this cancel out or not? Well, that determines the top here. We need to remember to factor. That's a difference of squares. So that is an x plus one times x minus one. So that does cancel out. And so we would say that that is a hole. All right, don't worry about specifically saying exactly where that hole is located at. Is that at negative one, three? Is that at negative one, negative two? Wherever that point is at, I want you guys in my class just to say, okay, it's, it's a hole here, but it'd be a vertical asymptote here. Okay, the other thing we wanna do here is also to be able to find x-intercepts. X-intercepts define that is where the top or the numerator is equal to zero. All right, so if we look here, any discontinuous points. So we try to see, does the bottom ever equal zero? And this one here, there are no discontinuous points. All right, and just to double check, X squared plus three, does that ever equal zero? That means X squared would equal negative three. And we cannot take the square root of negative three to get a real answer. So that's not going to be on our grid. Now the x-intercept, we're going to take the top, set that equal to zero. Now we could factor this, make this an x plus one and an x minus one. Or we can move it over and take the square root. If you move it over, take the square root. Remember, you do get two answers. And we get an x equals a negative one and x equals a positive one. All right, now on this other one here, let's see the points of discontinuity. Okay, let's take our x squared plus three x plus two, set that equal to zero. We're gonna set the denominator equal to zero. All right, when we set the denominator equal to zero, 
we need to make sure we factor this and we would get a x plus one and an x plus two. What two numbers multiply together to give us two, add together to get three. And so we would have a discontinuous point at negative one and a discontinuous point at negative two. Now our x-intercept, we set the top equal to zero and that'd be x equals negative one. Now here is a catch. This is rare and we have a good example here. If the x-intercept is actually a discontinuous point, it means that that x-intercept does not exist. We would actually, since that's the only one, we would actually say here that there are none, that there's no x-intercepts because that is a hole that gets canceled out. An x-intercept needs to be a point, not a hole. Okay, so you got a couple of problems for you to try here. You guys are just going to name the discontinuous points and then name the x-intercepts. If you guys have any questions or any comments or concerns, let me know. But thanks again for watching. Um, if you have any issues, let me know. And if not, good luck, and I'll see you later.